Welcome back to Coast to Coast Gaming Central Podcast. It's been it's been a long time. Are we alive? I don't know if we're alive, but we're talking. I'm dead. So this is from heaven. The very first podcast from heaven. Jesus Christ. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of hot here. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> what, what, is, what did you it's do? It's so hot. Here? What did you do? Uh, the other room. Come confess, confess your sins. Tell me your sins and no. Uh, we didn't do a podcast since February 18th. That's what I did. That's what sent us to hell. Okay. Yeah, Nonetheless. You 500 subscribers. You let them down. It's all your fault. 501. Oh, excuse me. Make that 502 after this episode post that. Eh? Eh? Uh, Okay. Make that Coast to Coast Gaming Central Podcast Episode 28. We are here and we are alive and well after a long absence. Monty Square. Yes. Dang. The last time we talked to you, the order was coming out. And we found out that that game sucks. Now let's move on. I don't think the game sucks. It's short. Pretty good story. But does it have any replay value? <laughs> Well, no, I mean, no. I got the Platinum and that was it. Even in their email, they say, <laughs> they said, you have beaten the game that many will have soon. Yeah, I know. They, I got that email, too. But nonetheless, <laughs> welcome to episode 28. It's been a long time. Uh, you left, have not been... Never f- left you. Left you. Without a- you have not been forgotten. Um, with that being said... Thank you if you if you're listening to this. Thank you for supporting us. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, back we, to one viewer. Yeah, yeah. Whoop, whoop. and we worked so hard to get that up. But we're gonna, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna swing things in. We there's a reason for all of this stuff that's happened. But before we get into that, Monty, okay. how you been doing? <laughs> I've been doing terrible, but don't mind me. I'm just making videos. A lot of videos. Actually, I'm the only one making videos. I just made one earlier. Uh, yes. Check that out. It's funny. I have it's to five make another seconds. one. It's Boost I have Best to re-upload, Video. I have to re-upload my Battlefield Hardline one on uh, on our on our page. It's Boost but Best I, Video since the uh, Woken the Hive, in my opinion. Woken the Hive. Which a lot of people like. Even some popular YouTuber, apparently. Like the. Hmm. Thank you, Dusk. Thank you, Dusk. Well, how have you been? You no know, uh, ups and downs. You know how life is. You know we in here, we does it big. You know what I mean? Just pushing stuff. You know what I mean? Working around stuff, getting into EDM, all that stuff. You know, like don't know if Bob. You know what I mean? I hey, do it. Ah. You do know our main audience speaks English. I hope you know that. No, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Yeah. So was, we got a little bit of Espanol in there. <laughs> yep. I don't think that was Espanol see, either. See, see. <laughs> Our butto Dalio. Okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, WWE Lucha, joke in there for. Lucha, Lucha. Yeah, Lucha. <laughs> <laughs> so. As you know, we usually have a much bigger podcast cast in here, and that will be returning probably within the next few episodes or so. Uh, the story is, okay. long story short, <laughs> right now, your host, your, your glorious host, <clears throat> MK guy, or Jaren Dorsey, however you want to call it. Uh, you see, I had an HDMI port issue with my PS4, sent it in the Sony, having some issues with them, they may not be able to fix it, they can fix it, who knows, they to, basically going to end up getting a new system, so whenever that day happens is when the big eight six person <coughs> podcast will return until then well we found another way and it took us a little bit to figure this out but i have well pretty much every other console except for the ps4 at the moment which sucks but uh <laughs> I do. so i you know got the wii u and the xbox one well the xbox one has a skype app so we are currently using skype to record our podcast which i think makes us 
the only Skype podcast on the internet as well as the PS4 chat podcast. But don't hold me to that because I don't know that for certain. It's because you're lying because uh, other people do use Skype all the time with chats. Okay, well, in that we're case, like, I'm sorry. We're, well, we're the, the first. H- H- M- K- all right, well, we're the first people to convert our PS4 podcast to a Skype podcast. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were the first PS4 party podcast. I mean, I mean, no we could have officially said that if everybody had, you know, gotten a Skype account. Then we could say. Well, I mean, but. Mr. Money, Mo Money, I got a money. He got money. He needs money. He don't got money. The bear suck money. <clears throat> uh, he has yeah, a Skype account. Is he just isn't hey, logged in form, on it at the, the moment. Bucking aren't that much. Hey, I mean, they are this year. We'll see. I mean, who would you rather have, Jay Cutler or, or Teddy Bridge? Neither. Go to the free agency and pick up Tim Tebow. You got a point. We all need Jesus. We'll talk. <laughs> you know, we'll talk. this is going to be a little different podcast. You know, we had mentioned about talking a little bit more other than just games. But we are Coast to Coast Gaming Central, so we're going to get to the games first. So first and foremost, I'm not going to talk about the PlayStation Store update. I'm not going to talk about Xbox or Nintendo Store update. We do that all the time. We'll get back to those when we get back to regular formats. Right now, what I want to talk about is the Vita is update. The Vita update. No, <laughs> yeah. we need to play a little bit. Of, we need to play a little bit of catch up. Last time we talked to you, the order was coming out. Now, pretty much everyone that cared about that game has probably already played it. Platinum didn't sold it, unless you downloaded the game, in which case you deleted it. MK. Um. I'm pretty unanimously as to Platinum. Um, now, I will say that that game, there's no video game out in the market that looks nearly as good as The Order right now. I will say that. But The Order is pretty much a five-hour movie that you can get the Platinum in in one playthrough, and you're done with it. With that being said, there'll probably be an Order 2, and the game sold really well for Sony, so they're probably going to make a sequel someday. Moving on from that, March rolled around. Um, Bloodborne released. Um, I think Dragon Ball Z also released in March. Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse, Battlefield Hardline released. Um, Monty, I know that in this in in this <sighs> episode of the podcast, you're the one that played a lot of the DBZ Xenoverse. Uh, how is that? Xenoverse, uh, it's kind of hard to say, to be honest. As a DBZ fan, you'll enjoy the game. It's really fun. Uh, you'll probably get your money's worth out of it. It's a great game overall, but if you're a f- trying to look for a fighting game, you're not going to really get it from this game. It's not the most balanced fighting game, and the mechanics are kind of wonky at that. It's fun to play with friends, though. It's, it's, a, it's a fun game. If you're, if you're not looking for a competitive fighting game, it's really a great game. Story-wise, how was that? Story-wise, uh, if, you, if you played like any other DBZ game, you know that the story... You know, it's based off the anime, it's the same thing. And I guess it's really nice that it's not that. It's like a twist on the original story. It's like, it takes its own route with it. And you also have create your own character, which is really fun. And that's what really got me, you know, looking into this game at first, because the creative characters. And I love creating my own character and stuff. And, the, and uh, creating a character, it's pretty nice. It's a really good creation. Pretty in-depth. Yep. All right, so and, and Xenoverse pretty much got pretty good to mm-hmm. you know g- pretty good reviews you know mm-hmm. around average between seven and a half eight somewhere in there that, that's a good game for a Dragon Ball Z game especially in recent mis- recent history the entire um, PS3 era basically yeah except for the very first game yeah. on PS3 <laughs> so hopefully they don't follow that trend this gen right oh uh, moving on oh it's also God. dim and they made Budokai. <laughs> Yeah. Um, by the way, Boosters and Monty have actually been watching Dragon Ball Z. But uh, yeah. anyway, um, moving on from that, Battlefield Hardline released. Um, Ooh, I, myself, I got that game. I picked that game up myself on the Xbox One. Boost has it on PS4. Um, that game is actually pretty fun. More fun than I thought it would be. It is. Um, I will say. When I return on PS4, I would I would like to get it on there because that game is definitely a game you want to play with people you know. Battlefield has always been that way. <laughs> uh, 
it's fun by yourself, but I will say that if you're playing any team-based modes, you will become annoyed very quickly. If you're playing by yourself with no friends. Um, that's just my take on it. I do have this, that, and they actually, they actually put some effort into the story mode as well. I actually don't mind it at all. Sort of like a... Episodes. Yeah, it's like a TV episode type thing. It's like an old school Miami Vice type story. It's actually not too bad. Actually, you know, kept my attention, so that's a good thing. Um, I'm not saying you want to buy the game for the story, but it doesn't, you know, but you can tell they actually put some effort into it. It's pretty good. You know, of course, sort of like Call of Duty, they always put effort into the story. This time, you can tell that they actually put effort into the story. Um, I'll have to upload my. my Kudos to you. Uh, what's the developer's name? Ah, uh, so gosh. One, it starts with a V. What's visceral. Yeah, visceral. Yeah. Kudos. Kudos. Yeah, kudos. And then, of course, we all know EA has the the huge one dropping later on this year. Star Wars Battlefront. So that's a good thing. And I have chicken to eat now. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not even gonna say it because that would be racist. <laughs> Here on Coast to Coast, we have no filter sometimes. But we can't say whatever the fuck we want. You got. No, nah, I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna do it. But, uh. Yeah, so Battlefield Hardline. Pretty good game. Um. Don't know how long, you know, it'll last this year because the shooter market. Is going to get very crowded with the usual Call of Duty, but then Star Wars Battlefront's coming out, and then also Halo 5 is coming out. So that game, you know, if you're going to get into it, I'd recommend picking it up soon, because by the time the fall rolls around, who knows. Um, with that being said, Bloodborne release now. I don't think any of... Yeah, none of us have played it. I'm sure Money and PJ and everybody else will love to talk about that another time. Mm-hmm. And that pretty much catches us up to where we are now. Um, a lot has been happening in recent history. Last week, Mortal Kombat released, which they, they haven't released any numbers yet, but they say it's their biggest launch in history. Um, which it, It's not even out on PS3 and 360 yet. They actually delayed those versions till June so they could give that game to some developer so they can just make it. <laughs> um... Yes, um, let's see. Nintendo, their new 3DS XL came out already. Um, they also had their new Xenoblade game coming out. Nintendo had a Nintendo Direct. They delayed Zelda, which sucked for a lot of people. But, um, hey, Star Fox still comes out, right? <laughs> E3 hype is rolling around. The Witcher 3 comes out next month, in a few weeks, actually. It'll be E3 before we know it, guys. Um, which is why Coast to Coast, we really want to make sure we get back now, get back in the thick of things, because we need to, you know, it's E3 now. Come on now. E3, as we know, it's Christmas for gamers. With that being said, Monty. Yes. No. You have played with Mewtwo and Smash Bros. on 3DS, uh-huh. which you just released last week. Uh huh. What is your take on that DLC? Should have been the base game, man. Look at this DLC bullcrap. But if it brings in new characters, I guess it's good for the series. It keeps it lasting a lot longer than you know how I normally play it. Uh, as long as the prices aren't out of this world, <coughs> Mortal Kombat. <laughs> but uh. Uh, the DLC itself, Mewtwo, it's, he's a fun character to play as. Uh, I'm glad he made it. You know, I've played him since Melee. He's a fun character to play as. It's, that's all really I really asked for. You know, not a bad character. It's just fun to play with. Yep. Now, I know you just didn't hint that Mortal Kombat's DLC is expensive. Uh huh. Come on, 10 bucks for a character? <laughs> MK. I mean that's a little bit okay. So <laughs> I mean thirty dollars you get four characters and a lot of costumes and stuff. Costume. Okay, it is. Yeah. Okay, it is kind of pricey. 
with more DLC to come. Mm-hmm. But it can't be any worse than Destiny, right? I mean, I mean, not not everyone's as is as rich as you, MK. You know. So. Yeah. No, it could be like, could be like WWE 2K. 2K. Well, I'm not rich, but I will say that this game does have a lot of content coming to it. I will say that if they ever do do like a complete edition. Sometime down the road, that will be quite the buy. But they plan on supporting this game, sort of like Capcom support Street Fighter with just yearly updates. So I don't know if that complete edition will ever happen. But we'll see. With that being said, boost. What? Have you heard about the new Vita 3000 model that's rumored to be coming? No, explain. Well, you know what the Vita 2000 looks like, right? The slim model. Yeah. Yeah. It looks a lot like that. Buttons are slightly positioned in different, you know, different ways again. But more important, the most important feature on this one is there's a HDMI slot on the bottom of it. Oh my God, we've been waiting for this for so many years. What the? Hold up, nah. This is a true question I need to ask them. What the hell does that top port do? Like, that top port been there for, like, years. Yeah, that's, not there on the, that's not there on the Slim Vita. It's not? Then why mm-hmm. they put it there on the... Um, they must have had plans for... Uh, isn't it the SIM card for the, for the AT&T ship? No, not that. That's at the top. The SIM card is at the bottom. That little top, like... Oh... I don't know. Maybe That's they by the um the game slot. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't know. Maybe they had plans for something and they just decided not to do it. I think that's for like servicing it, and they just left it there. So many unexplained. So many unexplained questions on that Vita. Yo, Sony is too cool, mysterious with their stuff. But boost really quickly. If you turn to ESPN, you can see Mayweather's house again from the start. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we here at Coast to Coast will be watching that Mayweather Pacquiao fight, by the way. Which brings to my attention what Oops, what better I year, I mean, what better time for EA to announce like a brand new fight night game when boxing is at its all time popularity? Hey, I'm just what? saying. Don't you think EA should announce a new fight night game? They capitalize on, you know, capitalize on the Mayweather Pacquiao actually fighting each other. What we need is another Def Jam game. That's what the fuck we need. <sighs> fuck, fight night. Who made those games? Was it EA? I believe so. If I'm right, right? What's up, Monty? EA what? Big. Yeah, EA Big. That's, I think. Monty, that's your job. What? what? Look up who made the Def Jam games. On PS2. Mm-hmm. I could have sworn it was EA. Yeah, because I remember EA. Yeah, I thought it was too. <laughs> Whoa. EA, yeah, I remember EA. I remember EA Sports Big, NFL Street. Mm-hmm. Um, what they make? Didn't they make FIFA Street? Yep. They made every. They never made Hockey Street with the rollerblades. No, they did. It was like a mini game nastiness. It was like a 3v3 type. Oh, you talking about that PS3 game? Yeah, yeah. that was it. I remember that? And they that also made that it. Madden. They made that Madden arcade game, dude. Yep, that was that was the street version because you could do some crazy stuff with that. They're like, whoa, the hell? <laughs> it was made by EA. Thought so. What happened? And to EA? AKI, whatever. What happened to AKI? Whatever he said, them studios. That's why. That's the question you need to ask. What happened to them? Well, they used to make uh, the the Dirty F games, I think, No Mercy and stuff. Let's see. So they made. I guess that makes sense, especially the first Def Jam game. That was a bootleg wrestling game with rappers. From what I'm seeing, they only made Japanese-only release games. 
right now. Yep. What's what's the latest game? Uh, I, I closed out. Oh. The last American release game was uh, Def Jam something, I think. One of the Def Jam games. Don't tell me it was Def Jam Icon. It, it might have been. Hold on, if they look. made Def Jam Icon, they deserve to not be making no games in America. <laughs> What's wrong with Def Jam Icon? <laughs> Everything. I think the last. <laughs> Oh, they made oh, style savvy transcenders for the Nintendo 3DS. Well, all right. Moving on. Let's see. No, they made Def Jam Fight for New York, Def Jam uh, Fight for New York to take over. That's yep. the PSP one? Yep. That's all they made. The Def Jam series. Vendetta and Fight for New York. Cool, cool. Well, we need them back. <laughs> Other news. So, who saw that Star Wars Battlefront trailer? It sucks. The game will suck. Don't buy it. Don't fall for it. <laughs> it's a trap. I'm gonna let my, I'm gonna let Monty take. I'm gonna let Monty take this one. Monty, what are your thoughts, anticipations, expectations, whatever you want to call it? Oh, it's gonna. What flop. do you What do you think about start? I almost said Battlefield, probably because of probably because of the developer Dice. But anyway. What do you think Star Wars Battlefront is going to be like? It's going to be like Battlefield, but with a skin over it. That's my take on it. I don't trust EA. I don't trust DICE. But they'll make a legit Battlefront game. I think it's going to be a Battlefield similar type of game. Judging by the trailer as well. How they make, they try to make it seem like an actual war. When Star Wars never really, really liked that. I don't know. I don't think they're going to do well with it. It could be fun, but there's just too much gone from previous installments. I don't see why I would get it. Will you be watching the presentation at E3? Yeah, I'll keep my eye on it. It's just, they took a lot of features away, and that's what really is bugging me out. You know, no space battles, no story, anything that, like, not, not enough stuff. There's only four planets which i think two maps each which basically four maps basically because all the maps will probably look similar in a way uh it's just not going to be a fun game in terms of content like how battlefront used to have a lot of stuff you can do it could be fun online with friends like if the gameplay is good but that's really it has to have good gameplay if it doesn't have good gameplay it will flop Well, I don't think it'll flop in terms of numbers, but maybe yeah. reviews. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I could see that, but who knows? So, in that case, will you be buying it? I will have to do a lot of prior research before getting it or attempting to buy it. It's, I don't really, it's not, I'm not going to pre-order it, I don't think. I would just have to get it when the reviews and stuff come out first. But if they had the, uh, but they had like a pre-order bonus, you know, that came with a beta, then would you pre-order it? Probably not. Because mm -hmm. you could always just get your money back if you don't like the beta. Mm -hmm. I remember I did that once for a beta, pre-ordered it just to get the beta, and then mm -hmm. cancel my pre-order. <laughs> Especially like right now, you could get the Rainbow Six mm -hmm. uh, beta just by pre-ordering the game right now. Like if you pre-order the game, they print out the code on your receipt. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get that receipt, you can cancel, it, but that pre-order code is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which, by the way, Rainbow Six is supposed to come out this year. That's another game. Like my fear, we're gonna we're returning to the ways it was in like the mid PS3 360 era, where first-person mm -hmm. shooters were all we got. Mm -hmm. Think about this fall. We got think about this year. I mean, we got Battlefield. We got Call of Duty. We got Star Wars Battlefront. We got uh, Rainbow Six. We got Halo Five. Mm -hmm. Hell, there's a new Killzone rumored. <laughs> That's my fear. 
But on the other hand, we do have some variety of stuff that's already come out. Some fighters, and we got you know stuff like The Witcher and Batman and all that coming out. Mm-hmm. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, I just don't want us to return to that. Mm-hmm. But, but I sort of, sort of could see it coming. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, with that being said, Madden comes out August 25th, huh? <laughs> <sighs> Madden. Really, the only game I'm looking forward to is Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I mean, not Star Wars. It's not Metal. A, yeah, <laughs> Metal Gear. I don't know why I got that mixed up. Speaking of Metal Gear, we've never been able to talk about this either. The whole Konami Kojima thing. Now, Monty, I'm sure you know a lot more about this than I do. Yep. Go ahead. Preach. Konami will fail. Bankruptcy. No, okay, okay. Before you before you before you take that route, explain the situation to our to our listeners oh, that well, may not know. Well basically, Kojima, the creator and founder of Kojima Productions and Metal Gear and all that, it basically he's getting fired from reports. It's like the difference in how he's leaving the company but the general I don't know, idea is that he's getting fired in December mostly because of power issues between Konami and Kojima Konami doesn't want him taking too much power over their own company and I think Kojima he wants more power over his own games and wants to branch out of like out of Metal Gear and make his own games so there's like a little power struggle here and basically Kojima is not going to be with us or with uh, Konami in December. Yeah. And I think Konami's here with this. <laughs> they really need Kojima in this point. Hold on, so he's not going to be with the company in December or September? December. December, okay, okay. Sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. It's, it's... I don't know why they wouldn't want to keep him. He is their biggest money drawer. The Metal Gear games are obviously Konami's best sellers. And uh, he's also trying to revive the Sonic Hill series, and that's getting a lot of hype just because of his involvement. We played the demo, and that, just because Kun, it was Kojima, a part of it, people got like, hyped for it and got excited. They didn't even know it was a Sonic Hill game. And now that it is Sonic Hill, people got excited for it. And now that he's leaving, we, it may not be as good as it could have been with uh, Kojima. Wow. Do you think that game will get canceled? They said that they it, they're going to continue with it because I forgot the other guy's name. I think what was his name? It's someone else. The movie director that's on it. Yeah, he's working with oh. the, the game as well. I think he's just going to do it by himself then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That game was once like Dustin for greatness. Now. I hope it does come out good still, but mm-hmm. it's probably going to fall to the mercy of going from studio to studio trying to work on the game, and it'll end up coming out as a big clusterfuck, mm-hmm. probably. I think uh, Konami really needs to try and get Kojima back on board. They're making a huge mistake, because Sonic Hill can be another... It's a name that people recognize. It's The horror genre of video games is dying, and uh, Resident Evil, like Capcom's turning by that series by releasing the HD collection of the original one. Well, last year had Alien Isolation, which came out to good reviews, and then mm-hmm. The Evil Within, but that's his last game, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then Resident Evil Revelations 2 came out with this episodic thing. I don't know how that was or not, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's. It was, it's like. Resident Evil was like at the top of horror, and now it's just turned into like action. And then a lot of other games are falling suit. And Silent Hill, like they didn't try to go action; it's just the series itself has fallen off. But it's not getting many sales as it could have. But Kojima could have easily brought it back, you know, to the mainstream audience that it once had back in the PlayStation and PS2 days. I agree with that statement, but now. Myself personally, I'm looking at it on a different from a different side of the table. It's dumb for Konami to let him go, mm-hmm. but Kojima himself, mm-hmm. maybe this is his chance to break away to where he can finally make what what he wants to make, rather than you know 
always being told, you know, like, like, mm-hmm. hey, like, we need a new Metal Gear, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, maybe, maybe now he can go off and, because obviously Kojima can get a job for any publisher he wants. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, go somewhere else, you can make what you want, make what he wants, and maybe, mm-hmm. let's say Metal Gear Solid 5 is the last one, well, Kojima can start some new IP, and mm-hmm. we'll just, you know, we'll have a new series to fall in love with. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it from that way, because honestly... If he stayed with Konami, yeah, they would have let him do Silent Hills, but he would always have to come back to Metal Gear. Mm-hmm. So maybe, you know, it might suck, but on the other hand, maybe it'll end up being some good in the long run. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know for sure, but it's just a thought. I mean, hell, the the guy that created the Sonic the Hedgehog series, I mean, he, he worked for Sega for years, and they only let him make Sonic games. So mm-hmm. he left. <laughs> he left and now he's made successful games you know he has a mobile game he has games he has a game coming out on ps4 and xbox one that are on this year it's like this adventure game but you know uh-huh. he's making what he wants to make mm-hmm. and then he can you know and then he came back to help sonic generations but you know just like i'm sure kojima would you know if they ever did like some super metal gear project i'm sure he'd help out with it too if fast but yeah. you know i just think that he He's probably not too. He's probably not too pissed off about it. I think. I think he wants to make some do his own thing because I'm, you know, I'm kind of curious, especially with the technology that Kojima has to shit now. I'm curious to see what new ideas he could come up with. Mm-hmm. But we'll see though. But from the Konami standpoint, it is really stupid unless they really are trying to commit just to the mobile market. Because mm-hmm. they really have. I mean, what do they have? They have Metal Gear. They have what Pro Evolution Soccer. And they have, uh, or say Ubis, uh, or say Ubisoft. I don't even know. Hmm. No, Pro uh, Evolution I, is Ubisoft, isn't it? Pro Evolution Soccer, I think that's Konami. Oh, it's okay. So they got that Metal Gear, and Silent Hills. You take away Kojima, that leaves you pretty much with soccer. <laughs> and then there's FIFA, which owns that market. So. Mm-hmm. That's that's how that goes, but yeah, I wonder why I wonder why Konami and Kojima had this fallout in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like, has any has any word gotten around about that? No, it's just there's multiple sources, and they just all conflict each other. Like, basically, mm-hmm. uh, there's this girl that was working on Metal Gear, a voice actress, and she said that. They wanted to fire him for a while now because of him claiming his power. But the what with, <laughs> with the Kunai representative, like they are making a strategic, like they try to use some fancy big word of why they did it, a strategic maneuver, or some crap like that. I forgot what the word was, but they just try to make it sound fancy why they removed him. But basically, they're just saying they're firing him for some reason they had not said. Mm-hmm. Did you also see that they removed his name off the box art for the game? Nah, I don't think they will. Cause he's no, nah, they no. It's on their website now. Mm. Apparently, like if you go on their website and you look at Metal Gear Solid Five, they removed like a. I forgot if it's like a Hideo Kojima production or Hideo Kojima game or whatever, but it's not on there anymore. It just says Konami. This sounds like something that WWE might do. Hmm. Uh-uh. Kojima. Kojima. He, he's affiliated to Chris Benoit. <laughs> remember when Konami made that Metal Gear Solid 4 game by hand with no help? Yeah. <laughs> then they just happened to stumble across Peace Walker. Yeah. <laughs> Found it outside the corporation place outside yeah. the building ah copy this make it good times good times well mm. and also like i said e3 is coming up too uh-huh. so with that being said who's gonna showcase metagear solid at e3 if kojima's not there <laughs> it's gonna be uh and how will the people react to it mm-hmm it's gonna be uh, 
Mr. Money. You know what? It's going to be freaking Reggie Phils <laughs> announcing that Reggie Metal Gear Solid 5 Reggie is coming Fee. to the Wii U. Well, Reggie Fils are uh, back. Uh, <laughs> we here at Nintendo would like to welcome Hideo Kojima to our Nintendo family. <laughs> <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 5 will be a Wii U exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> it has been delayed until next Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they got it. we have to we have to reprogram the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is exclusive to NX, our new system that will release in 2018. <laughs> but get ready for that new 3DS that's coming soon. The Microsoft Five version speaking of which we haven't talked about that yet oh new 3ds no not that the new oh. the new nintendo home console oh the, that weird <laughs> surprisingly i'm gonna still spend my money on that mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm not surprised Even because I just, it, was, it felt like i just bought this system like a year ago mm -hmm. Even though. Not really a year. Nintendo's trying to bounce back from their failures from uh, this generation of gaming. Well, the average console life cycle is five years, right? Uh, so, I would last say gen about, I would say last about gen six. But how long does it take for games to be pro? What I mean is, last gen was an exception okay, because that lasted extra long. But what, PS2 came out 2000, PS3 didn't come out until like 06, 07? Yeah, but 360 came out in 05. Yeah. But, PS1 came out in 95, PS2 came out in 2000. Well, yeah, about five, Bro six years. And, yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I figure Wii U came out, what, 2012? So, this will be its third year. So essentially, next year they can show, they can hint, like they can start teasing a new system. The year after they can release it, that'll be five years. But I just feel like it, they're already announcing it when we're so early into this generation of games. Like, the Wii U came Not out. Not for them, though. It came out, like, what, a year before PS4 and Xbox One? Uh, yep. 2012. It just feels like they're just bailing out on it already. They're it does kind of feel that way, but they must realize that they need to do something something fast. Mm. I, I just don't know what it is. I mean, <laughs> one thing they could do, let's say they do come out in a couple of years, right? You know, we mm -hmm. all know that the PS4 and Xbox One probably wouldn't have a new system for a couple of years after that still. Mm-hmm. They could put out a they could put out a system that you know has better you know has better specs than the current PS4s and Xbox Ones and if they have a couple years with that on the market before the other systems do, they could you know at least rebound a little bit you know. That but would I help the problem with Nintendo is that when their consoles come out, they don't go way too far beyond like the next generation of gaming. Like, yeah, that's their. Like when the Wii came out, it wasn't that much different with the PS2. When the Xbox it was worse than the PS2. <laughs> yeah, in some ways it did feel like that, especially the earlier games. Like they were awful, and it's just that's why, I, in terms of like an actual gamer, they're not looking for a Wii. The Wii is a, a family system. That's why it sold so well in that generation. But to like the Gamers, like, they don't want that. Why would I want that? 360 has better graphics, plays better, better games. Get that instead. And then they come out, then they come out with the Wii U and they try to change their whole, they mm -hmm. try to say we're about the gamers. But and then, then by then, it was maybe too little too late. When, like, or, when the Wii U came out, it didn't feel like that was the next generation of gaming because the graphics were barely a little bit better than the PS3 and uh, 360 at the time. And they just didn't really advertise it as well, saying that it was the next generation. It felt like it could have been an add-on to the Wii. It wasn't called, you know. Nope. It, In history, it's, it's, it'll go down as the start of the whatever generation this is. 
mm-hmm. but you know graphical and maybe that's what they're you know they teamed up with the partnerships that they have now mm-hmm. you know there really is no excuse for them to not make a powerhouse system because they they, they have to have learned their lesson now so that's why the wii u failed i don't don't understand what, what started this because the gamecube and the 1064 like they were pretty on much on par with the time yeah. of the games they had good graphics for their time and then when we came out, I was like, they didn't really improve. Like, nothing changed. They, they used to be the company mm-hmm. that, you know, like, back like, the Super Nintendo days, stuff like that. Like, they had the superior system when it came to graphics and everything. Mm-hmm. I think they became too complacent. It's, like, then, like, Sony came through, and then they had that view of, like, is it Sony or Nintendo? And then... GameCube and PlayStation 2, same and thing. Xbox. But then Xbox came, and they were like the exact same thing with what the PlayStation was putting out. Like they were similar, so it was like that's what started like this war right now. And yeah. then Nintendo fell behind. I mean, the Wii U is the first system that Nintendo really has a network infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the oh, we we had terrible servers. I remember that. Yeah, the Wii U is. I would say the Wii U, when it comes to online, is on par with like PS3, which is great for them c- compared to where they came from. Mm-hmm. But but like, really, they don't need to change much. They just really mm-hmm. just need to release a system that has stuff in it that people want. Mm-hmm. That's really all they have to do. They they really like a lot of people can't really survive off their name. They can. <laughs> They just need to release a system. Okay, if they release a system right now, all the Nintendo fans, myself included, will all go out and buy it. Nintendo, they can live strictly off that. But if they want to get back to what they used to be, they need to create a system that makes other people, other than just Nintendo fans, go buy it. Mm-hmm. You got to make a system that makes Xbox and PlayStation players want to pick it up. Now, granted, the Wii U is a lot of people's second system. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is if you have a PS4 or Xbox... If if you're lucky enough to have two systems, you have the Wii U. <laughs> more more than likely, that's just the nature of the. But for them to have franchises as popular as let's say Zelda, you know, by all by all rights, Zelda should look a lot like The Witcher, you know, but it doesn't, and it will look really good on Wii U. But now, since we've been spoiled with Xbox Ones and PS4s, you know, it only leaves the, you know, it only leaves the imagination to what could be. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, well, hopefully Nintendo, Nintendo gets that. Right. Well, I, I think they know that too because they lost all their, they lost a lot of the third party support this gen because of that, mm-hmm. and they're gonna want to because they won't be able to survive without you know the third party. So I think they they'll learn their lesson. This I think this gen was their wake up call. Sort of like the PS3 was Sony's wake-up call last gen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think this might be Nintendo. You know, Nintendo, they they got away with the Wii. Mm-hmm. They built some cheap-ass system that everyone could play that everyone bought. <laughs> I think Nintendo also needs to stop focusing on gimmicks for their consoles. Yeah. They just need yeah. to focus on the game itself. Like That's probably why the Wii... In terms of like its hardware and what it could do, the performance of it was so bad because they probably spent most of their money and effort on, on the Wii remote. The Wii remote. And you know, it's crazy. I actually like the gamepad too, but mm-hmm. you know, that's the. To be honest with you, the gamepad is probably their most normal controllers. <laughs> so the thing is, it's like they probably spent a lot of time on that too, like that gimmick. But most games don't even use it. Like what? It, it was just like most games use it as a second screen and. That's basically it. That's like the selling point of the gamepad for most games. Some games that yeah, has a Even though I will say, though, Nintendo, mm-hmm. may, they don't need to stop innovating, but they need to start doing it smarter. The reason why I say that is, and mm-hmm. Boost would agree with me, the whole idea of, you know, playing your games on, like, the little tablet thing, mm-hmm. you know? Think about mm-hmm. when the PS4 came out, what was Sony touting? Like, oh, we have that, you know, you, you just, you know, if you buy a Vita, you can play your games anywhere on your Vita, right? And then yep. vice versa, Microsoft with this Windows 10 update coming out, like you could play your games on all your PCs and every like a lot of those ideas came like a lot of the ideas that the two powerhouses use, they they sort of steal from Nintendo. The difference is they do it in a way that appeals to the to the gamers that you know that want that. 
Nintendo, they sort of like force mm -hmm. it on people. They need to, they need to figure out how to do that better, because they need to they need to sit back and realize like, hey, our ideas are making other companies a lot of money, and it's not making us money. Why? <laughs> I think the biggest problem is, like, they can have like their, their gimmicks, like the Wii or Mo in the gamepad, but I don't think their console should focus directly on it. Like, take for the Kinect for the example, it wasn't mandatory for the 360. But it sold decently well, but it wasn't received well. But then Xbox One came out, and they tried to force that on the consumers, and they didn't like that. And that's why the sales, for the most part, weren't as good as PS4, for example. They tried Until to force it on it to, to the consumers, and they didn't like that. Yeah, Xbox One didn't didn't start becoming a success for Microsoft until they took the Kinect out. Mm -hmm. And then and PS4. Option. Sony, like, they still have support for the move, but you barely, you wouldn't even notice that. Yep. <clears throat> it's optional. Plus, they actually have the move built into the DualShock 4 as well. Mm -hmm. But then also, like again, PlayStation Camera is an option. It ended up selling really well. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere. <laughs> yep. Because they don't really force it upon... It was like an option. Like, oh, I can have a camera too. Instead of, wow, I have to pay an extra $100 for something I don't want. Yeah, so plus the camera on PlayStation 4 only costs... 50 or 60 and the connect the like does the connect does cost a hundred dollars again yeah. just because it was selling like hotcakes the the um playstation i um camera mm -hmm. price went up by ten dollars yep. 69.99 yep. also now it, it also helps a lot of people who stream as well with the camera and with mm -hmm. that feature ps4 came out first with. Uh, yep mm -hmm. the launch the, them launch days Yep. The m midnight launch days. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, um, something else I want to mention real quick. Nintendo does have one more Wii U bundle coming out with their anticipated um, third-person shooter. It kind of looks like Ratchet and Clank, kind of. Uh, Splatoon, their first player shooter squad-based game. Um, they're going to have a bundle for that. Only sold at Best Buy. <clears throat> which is weird to me, but and oh, and they're still making a lot of money on amiibos, which I bought one by the way. I got the Sonic amiibo. I wanted to talk about that. Like, what's your Go opinion ahead. on gaming with these little figures that are becoming more and more popular? Um, good for the kids. Gives them something to do. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, for us, it sort of feels stupid and forced upon. But then, like, when I go to Target and I see little kids, like, begging their dads to buy them these little Skylander figures, you know, I'm like, man, like, Activision really came up with a good idea with that. And then Disney Infinity followed, and now Nintendo follows suit with Amiibos, and they're doing really well. And now they have freaking, what was it, Lego Universe, and now Legos are going to have that, too. I think it's so, going to be an answer to the gaming industry. It's, like, it'll end up, <laughs> if they keep it up, it'll become oversaturated. Mm -hmm. like when, DLC, away. when DLC was first coming out for the PS3 and 360, it was cheap. It was I don't know, like oh that's kind of cool add-on content. Like they did like once. Now every game's like, oh this game's come September and we're already planning. A Can you name a game that doesn't have a season pass? Yeah, it uh, it's like that's like the standard now. Before it was just like a nice add-on bonus. It felt like you know pay five bucks for like a couple mats or something. Now it's like you pay. 40 bucks for like a season pass now it's like it's like a mandatory thing the first dlc i ever bought was call of duty mm -hmm. no technical difficulties yep as you see, on the Xbox One, when you're talking on Skype and you don't press any buttons on your controller, your controller just happens to just, you know, automatically turn off. Ah. It cut me off. But I was saying, the first DLC I ever bought was uh, the Call of Duty 4 map pack, which was $10. It came with, like, four or five maps. And, you know, it was, a, you know... Four maps. <clears throat> and I'm thinking, you know, it was a good deal. Mm -hmm. Now, well, the war came single, out. now, like, there's single-player games only, like the Evil Within. Mm -hmm. that comes with season passes. The game came out in October. It just got its first DLC today. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's completely unnecessary. But, like I said, with the whole Skylander stuff, I could see the cash in it. 
mm. but it'll become oversaturated, and then they'll most likely have to take a break and then reintroduce it. It's kind of like Guitar Hero Rock Band, how they killed those games back in like 2010 or whatever, and yeah. now they're coming back on PS4, Xbox One, and Wii U, by the way. Yep. They got some support there. But uh, at least with uh, Guitar Hero, Rock Band's not coming out on Wii U, but Guitar Hero is. Because, mm. act- you know, Activision wants money no matter what. But um, Also, it's like with the amiibos a lot of people these days are not buying it just to you know i want this for my game a lot of people are just buying them because nintendo the problem with nintendo is that they're not making enough which making them rare which makes them valuable so people are buying them just to collect them and selling them for a higher profit which is where a lot of problems with nintendo because well nintendo has always they've always done this even with their games they make like a little less than the actual demand for the game to make it seem like there's a higher demand for the game, if that makes sense. So, was, like, let's say a hundred people want the game. Well, Nintendo will make 70 <laughs> copies, so it'll look like the game's sold out and you have to wait for the next shipment and it looks good for them. Mm-hmm. They always do that. It, with the Amiibo figures, it's like they got worse and worse as it got, like, you can pre-order it at this store. You can, you know, buy it. Then each yeah, now it. there's some that are store store exclusive now. Store exclusive. Some some stores you can't even pre-order them, but they will have them. Like it's getting worse and worse, and there's less and you less for the demand. I was actually the only reason why I found my Sonic the Hedgehog one. I was on vacation, and they had one left at that GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> like for the next wave, the wave comes out, I believe, in May, and it already sold out. Because yeah. Nintendo is not producing enough. Didn't they announce like all their waves all the way through like the fall? They, they, they announced like, a couple of waves. I don't know when the release dates are, but I know that there's two, three waves already announced in the next wave. It's coming. I will day. say, with the amiibos though, I know <laughs> that they can you, you can use them across various games and shit like that. But I know a lot of people will just get them just because mm-hmm. they're well-made figurines of characters that we've grown up liking a lot. Yeah, <laughs> like me, I'm probably never gonna use the Sonic Amiibo, especially not for Smash Brothers. But I just, you know, it's a well-made Sonic collectible, so I got it. <laughs> but I, I just don't see this going anywhere good. I just think like maybe Xbox and Sony, like, they're gonna pick up on this and put this in their systems and stuff. I don't. Well, they already have it on their systems with Skyline. Sky, yeah, Scott. Well, Skyline is just is the game. And like, Disney oh, Infinity. Disney. But I feel like, because Nintendo, it's not just a game, it's the entire brand of Nintendo that's doing it now. Yeah, but the, I guess the difference is, though, Nintendo, out of all of them, they're the only ones that could really get away with that. And the reason why I say that is because all their characters, a lot of, or a lot of their characters are all kid-friendly, too. <laughs> Yep. Imagine like like you're, like, like you're not gonna like you're not gonna like you're not gonna have Kratos amiibos running around. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> like, like Call of Duty, like you need to buy this gun amiibo to get this gun in the multiplayer. Even though I will say this though, um, the success of amiibo sort of has me thinking that maybe on their new system or maybe on the Wii U, maybe Nintendo will release. Like maybe the maybe a Pokemon RPG, but you have to, but like oh. you know, you can go out and buy. You, you know where I'm going with this? Oh. <laughs> like, Stop. like they'll sell like um maybe like Pokemon card packs or something like a scan on the gamepad or something. No, I'm just you're, thinking you're, you're killing the Pokemon franchise as you speak. <laughs> oh, you say that now? Do you know how much money they could probably make on that? Do you know how much I would stop playing? Actually, I mean, they really just need to just make a console version of the Pokemon games, and they would make, like, you want to talk about ending some of your hardships with the console. (laughs) And that's another thing that they, that's another problem they have. They just don't do shit that makes sense sometimes. Like, that is the number one selling video game franchise. Why is it not on your home console? And if it is on your home console, it's a crappy spinoff game. That has nothing to yeah. do with the original game. Every other company by now would have made that game some some glorified HD mm-hmm. epic RPG. People, when they saw like that trailer for a Pokemon before it was even announced, it was like just a teaser. People were like, "Holy crap! HD Pokemon game finally!" And then it comes out, "Oh, it's just a fighting game." Yep. Even though I think that game will actually be it, fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> but- 
Yeah, I think a lot of people they were disappointed but excited at the same time because they really wanted that RPG HD Pokemon game that yep. people have been waiting for years and years. And then Nintendo also has that partnership with that mobile company, so there's going to be a lot of Nintendo games on cell phones now. So, since, who knows? Since uh, Pokemon existence, we only had two games for the GameCube that were close to the RPG field of Pokemon games, and they were they were alright. They are decent. But they weren't the Pokemon games that I would have wanted. One could argue the GameCube was our last great system. You know a game they should make? Pokemon Snap 2. With the <laughs> use the gamepad as a camera. I'll say the Wii U is a good it's a good it's a good piece of hardware. It's not the best, but it's a good piece of hardware. And it's quite and I, you know, it's as shown with like Bayonetta 2 and stuff like that. Like of course you can make really good games on it. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of, you know. The Wii U, like I said, it's a great second option system. Yeah. But like if I were a new consumer, they need to make a system to where like if I'm a new consumer right now and I go into Best Buy and I see all three systems next to each other, I'm gonna pick either a PS4 or an Xbox One. Mm-hmm. But that's their problem. They need to they need to release a system that you could put right next to those two systems, mm-hmm. you know, and be like, oh, which one do I want to get? <laughs> if they can do that, they'll be okay. I mean, mm-hmm. well, like I said, I mean, hell, they, but then Nintendo, maybe, like I said, they're just living on their past. I mean, they killed Sega with, with inferior hardware, <laughs> but then again, mm-hmm. Nintendo, if they keep releasing new systems and stuff, they're going to end up doing the Sega to themselves. Mm-hmm. So we'll see, but then last but not least, Microsoft. They have their whole Windows 10 thing coming out, which everyone gets upgraded for free. If you're running anything from Windows XP all the way through Windows 8.1, everyone gets upgraded for free, even if you have the illegal version, too. So, <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah, everyone gets upgraded to Windows 10. And then the Xbox One will then be able to, you will be able to play all your Xbox One games across all PCs and tablets and everything that's running Windows 10. And then also, uh, they've made game development on Xbox One much easier, and they've added a little bit more. How they've at the since the Kinect is no longer needed, they added more horsepower to the system too. <clears throat> they said any developers claim with their new program in Windows 10. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they were able to get a game. They made a game for the PC, and they're, they're, Microsoft has a program to where you pretty much just like upload your game to it. And it does all the coding for you to put the game on Xbox One, and the devs just have to go back and bug debug the game. So, mm-hmm. and one of the one of the indie developers said they used the system, and it only took them. I mean, granted, it was like a simple pinball game, but mm-hmm. they said they had the game made on PC and completely running on Xbox One in four days. So, you know, four days for a, for a video game port is pretty damn good, I'd say. <laughs> so, you know that. They're on the up and up with that, and they're adding more features to their system. They're firmly in second place now behind Sony. Sony still owns. Um, but this is a big year for Microsoft. I mean, to be fair, if they're gonna if they're picking any year to make a move, it'll be this year because Uncharted 4 got delayed. Uh-huh. Sony Sony has already pretty much released all their exclusives mm-hmm. that that are announced this far mm-hmm. for this year. I mean, Bloodborne came out. The other one was supposed to be Uncharted. That's that's not out this fall. <laughs> Microsoft has Halo Five, which is their big one, and then they also remember they they took a they took a Tomb Raider too. So for them, this is this is the make or break year for them if they want to try to play catch up to the PS4. Yep, this is the make or break year for them, um, and they they're already talking about they have a lot of games to show that come out this year at E3 and all this stuff. So we'll see. Sony, like I said, they're playing from ahead now. Their their only thing is, I, and I hope they won't. They just can't start getting complacent. <laughs> mm. Like I hope Sony continues doing what they're doing, coming out with new games and new features. Like the best, fe- like across across the gen, across all systems, the best feature I think is share play. That's the coolest thing right now. Mm-hmm. Now we all know that most likely Microsoft will rip that off sometime soon. <laughs> Yeah, nat- nat- naturally, but you know, that is a really cool feature. The Xbox One, they have a lot, you know, like like the snap feature and the the ability to run two apps at once and stuff like that's all cool too. But yeah, 
so we'll see. Um, I guess like me, like I like not, when I first had an Xbox One, I didn't really spend a lot of time with it. Mm-hmm. Now that I am, um, I will say that it is a good system. It, it actually is. It's very easy to use. My only complaint is every time you put in a new game, it takes forever for it to install on the Xbox One. And Microsoft knows it too. <laughs> Mortal Kombat, it took I had to wait an hour and a half to play that game on Xbox One. Mm. An hour and a half. To install it and download the patch and everything an hour and a half. So that's not good. Yeah. Cause I know if I would have put that in on PS4, I would have been playing it probably within five minutes. <laughs> but that being said, I think we, I think this is a pretty good, nice podcast, right? Yeah. Three man show. I mean, I think we carried it. K lyric, we miss you. Maybe if you you know would join us on Skype sometimes. Money, you know. You too. Bx. Bx. Rest in peace. <laughs> uh, whoever else needs to rest in peace, rest in peace. <laughs> Crazy kid is probably still sleeping. <laughs> yeah. PJ, well, DMC four is coming out soon again. <laughs> Good times. Good times. Boost, where you at? Boost. <laughs> well, I was gonna ask Boost for a segment. <laughs> yep. We'll wait for you to get back. Real quick. What game are you playing? Nah. <laughs> well, real quick, since Boos is gone, Monty, let's get some picks from you real quick. <laughs> Who do you think is going to the NBA Finals? You know, it's, it's got to be Warriors. And uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, of course, obviously. I'll stop. But, uh... <clears throat> I don't think the Hawks will make it. Might be Cleveland. I'll go with Cleveland and the Warriors. Cleveland and the Warriors, and the Warriors is going to win it all. There we go. We're over. Mm. Monty, who do you think will win it all? The Warriors. I got the Warriors making it, and I got the Bulls making it, actually. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Maybe that's just that's just what I want. <laughs> that's probably not gonna happen, but that's what I want. But I think the Warriors. I think away. the Warriors are gonna win. Even though I will say, if the Bulls do make it, and Derrick Rose is there, I would almost want them to win. Because <laughs> the likelihood of Derrick Rose making it back, you know. <laughs> but very great. that be that being said, Bulls, it's time for your segment. I don't think In my case. segment is not really, you know, it's kind of a, you know, the everybody, you know, the original cast. So, Boo says his segment is not worthy, or no, 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 this new podcast format is not worthy of his segment for right now. Yep. Okay, well, in that case, I'll come up with a new segment for this one. What are you watching? <laughs> You know what? Forget it. Um, so, Monty, what games have you been playing this week, man? Actually, no. What, what games have you been playing this week plus the few episodes, well, a few weeks before? 2K, Xenoverse, Smash Brothers. That's it? Yep. All right. You, MK? Uh, Master Chief Collection, Mortal Kombat X, of course, which is the greatest Mortal Kombat ever made. Um. Yeah, a little bit of Titanfall Xbox shit. There you go. Yeah, it's a good thing you only have an Xbox now to play. Cause if well, I got a Wii U, I just ain't playing it right now. Exactly. exactly. It's good. It's even shorter right. now. Yeah, give me a month. Wii U games start coming out again. Yeah, all right. I ain't even <laughs> asking the question no more. All right, so, all right, so games I've been playing this week is 2K. Played mm-hmm. the Battlefield Hardline. I like the game so far. Need to play a little more. And that's it, really. And play a little crew on the PS3. Yeah, we recruited him. I will be returning to the PS3 very soon, by the way. 
Mm. Yes, Monty, you heard it. You heard it right. Oh yeah, I'll. I'll believe. I don't it. know why. <laughs> Mostly because I have it. a collection of PS3 games that I can't play without a system being here, and that bothers me. Mm-hmm. But I will be returning to the PS3 very soon. So keep that in mind. Totally that radical. Being s- <laughs> With that being said, it might be time for us to go ahead and shut this down as the NBA playoffs are on. Boston and Cleveland are tied 23-23 to right now, end of the first quarter, on TNT. And the NFL schedule will be coming out in the next 24 minutes, which I will watch probably with Monty and Money and everybody else. Yeah. The Raptors comes out, so it's a pretty busy night in the sports world. It's my favorite time of the year, kind of, next to football. But, uh, We'll be back next week. Somehow, some way. Or next year. I don't know. <laughs> we'll definitely be back next week. We gotta you know we're gonna get back on this. We we should start a Kickstarter. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> you know, I actually how about, had a, how about actually, this MK? Okay. Hmm. Go to go to GameStop. Mm-hmm. Every week. Buy the use the use Vita and return it. That rental. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well just get the PlayStation TV. Again. Yeah, get it back. That sucks though. The mic quality on that thing sucks. I won't lie. I want, can't you just use the PS4 controller and hook it up? And... Uh-uh. You gotta use Bluetooth. Dang. Yep. Really yeah, they really fucked that up. Uh... <laughs> But, hey, it is what it is. With that being said, thank you for listening to Coast to Coast Gaming Central Podcast. We have returned. We'll be back next week, probably on the same format. Like I said, we won't be leaving this format for, for I'm, I'm telling you right now, two weeks. God. But I will be making my return to PS4 and all of its PS4. Sometimes you just need a break. Shut up. You just Shut cheap. Up. And you got to be cheap. There we go. Yeah. Until next time, I'm MK Guy. With me, I got my boy, Boost Dusk. Yeah, yo, check out the video that recently posted on um, YouTube, the Coast 2 CGC. Coast CGC on everything. Boss Dre 05 on everything. We in this BI. You know, we in here. We going to take over this summer. They go, ah! All right. Calm down. I'm done. And, of course, I got my boy, Mr. Monty, as well. I'm waving. Goodbye. He's leaving. And uh-uh. <laughs> then there's good old MK guy, Jaron Dorsey, however you want to say it. And, uh, yeah. I am going to play some MKX on the Xbox while I watch TV. Because you can do that on the Xbox. Step your game up, other systems. All right. That's all I needed. Talk to you later, guys. Till next time, go subscribe. No Monty joke. Nah, no Monty joke. That's 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 uh, only for the regular format, you know. Just like your segment, Monty, we, we we're giving you a break. You did a good job today. Surprisingly, dang shots fired. <laughs> Monty, do you have anything to say before we close this? You left already. Oh. What a piece of shit. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Monty's the sole reason why Kojima's leaving Konami. <laughs> Kojima looked at who buys his game, saw Monty, and said, you know what? It's not worth it. <laughs> With that being said, thanks for listening to Coast Coast Gaming Podcast, episode 29. We're out of here. Bye-bye.